One morning, a few days before Christmas, Oliver was taking one of his usual passenger runs along the Little Western. Isabel and Dulcie had a few more passengers than usual, but aside from that, the tank engine's morning had been rather uneventful. But, as he crossed a bridge near the middle of the line, Oliver felt the track shift slightly beneath him. Driver, something's wrong. Oliver exclaimed. He surged forward, eager to get off the bridge. His train cleared it just in time. What was that? We'd better have a look, replied Oliver's driver. He quickly joined the guard at the rear of the train. The bridge is gone. Gone? What do you mean, gone? It collapsed just after we crossed it. Look! Oliver's driver turned to look, and he gasped. Where the bridge had been, there were only two rails, suspended in mid-air. Blimey! Oliver's driver said. A sinking feeling came over him. With that bridge gone, the Little Western was severed. Oliver's driver returned to the cab and explained their predicament. Oliver's face fell. Do you mean we're stuck on this end of the line? I am afraid so, Oliver. Until they can get that bridge repaired at any rate. That is the last thing we need before Christmas. We'd better get going. We'll have to report this at the next station, Oliver's driver said, and the tank engine headed off. He couldn't help worrying as he did so. People were relying on the railway for their Christmas mail and travel. What, he wondered, would happen to them? A short while after the collapse, the Fat Controller arrived at Tidmouth to see Duck and Sheffield. Donald, Douglas and Oliver had been at the far end of the Little Western when the bridge had collapsed, and he needed to ensure that the people along the Little Western would be looked after. Duck, Sheffield, we need to keep trains running along the Little Western. I have arranged for buses and lorries to help ferry passengers and goods across the broken section of the line. Do you want us to run a full schedule, sir? As well as you can, Doc. What, with the two of us? The fat controller glanced over as another whistle sounded out. No, with the three of you, he replied as Thomas arrived next to the other two tank engines. A determined look crossed Duck's face. We'll do what we can, sir. I knew I could count on you, Duck. Donald, Douglas, and Oliver will be running trains between Callan and Arlesborough, replied the fat controller, and he glanced at his watch. I must be going. I'll need to get ready for the press conference. A press conference, sir? An accident like this will definitely make the evening news, Thomas. I just have to make sure it doesn't do too much damage to the railway's reputation. The fat controller replied, grimly. The engines watched, slightly shocked, as he departed. Surely, surely this wouldn't. If they could get unsafe, this could be the end of the railway. Leave the fat controller to worry about that. We've got enough to worry about here, Sheffield said abruptly. More to the point, keeping services running here will give the fat controller something good he can tell the reporters, Duck pointed out. I suppose you're right, Duck. Thomas glanced over. This is your branch, though. How should we handle the work? Well, if you could cover Oliver's trains and some of mine... Duck began. A brief discussion ensured, then the engine set to work. Just after lunchtime, Oliver backed down to Callan Station to take some passengers up to Islesborough. Over in the yard... Donald was having his trucks loaded by some lorries. Penny for your thoughts, Oliver. You've been looking a wee bit upset all day. I just can't help feeling that this is my fault. Didn't you fash yourself, Oliver? If you hadn't triggered the collapse, Dougie or I probably would have. 
I'm sure that bridge was just waiting to fall. Oliver brightened up. Suppose you've got a point. Aye. How do you know got your passengers off the bridge in time? Things could have been a lot worse. There is that. Don't worry, Oliver. I'm sure things will turn out alright. Donald said hopefully, and he wasn't the only one hoping that. At Nutford Station, a couple of hours later, the fat controller stood in front of a group of reporters. Ladies and gentlemen, as you may already know, one of the bridges on the Arlesborough branch line collapsed early this morning. One of our trains had just passed over it, but was not involved in the collapse itself, began the fat controller, and he gestured to the man standing next to him. Naturally, Her Majesty's Railway Inspector will be making a full investigation. Now, I believe you may have some questions. A babble of voices hit the fat controller as all the reporters asked their questions at once. He waved his hand to calm them down. Don't worry, I'll have time for all your questions, starting with... He gestured to one of the reporters. Charles West, Sodor Nightly News. Was anyone injured in the accident, Mr. Hat? Fortunately, nobody was injured. Oliver managed to get his train off the bridge just in time. While West jotted down some notes, another reporter stuck her hand up. Mr. Hat, what does this mean for services along that branch line? The fat controller quickly explained the arrangements he'd made while the reporters took notes. Thank you, Mr. Hat. Mr. Hat, how do we know the rest of the railway infrastructure is safe? The fat controller sighed. He'd been hoping nobody would ask that question. Our bridges have been standing for years without incident. So had that one on the Osborne branch. If you will allow me to finish, those bridges have been standing for years without incident. However, following this morning's accident, I have asked our civil engineers to conduct an assessment of all tunnels, bridges and other structures along our lines. Slow orders have also been posted for all bridges until they have been cleared. The reporter blinked incredulously. That's it? Oh, give it a break, Ian. Paying no heed to West's advice, Ian took two steps towards Gordon. This engine's a bit to leave with your express. How do we know it's not going to go plunging off that viaduct just down from Tidmouth? We've only got your word. Suddenly Gordon whistled, drowning out all conversation. How dare you! The express engine thundered angrily. Mr. Hatt and his family have done more for this island and the railway than you could ever know. You have no right to interrogate him like some sort of criminal. These are valid questions, I'll have you know. And you've already had valid answers. We don't know what caused the collapse yet. Well, if it wasn't your railway's fault, then whose was it? Little green men from Mars, perhaps? If you'll just let the railway inspectors do their job... That's enough, Gordon, said the fat controller firmly. The express engine fell silent, still seething. The fat controller turned to Ian, but it was Charles West who spoke first, with thinly disguised distaste. Gordon's got a point, Ian. We don't have any answers yet. Now, if you have done scaremongering, we journalists have a press conference to finish. Ian stormed off without a word. The fat controller turned back to the rest of the journalists, some of whom were scribbling notes. Are there any further questions? There were none, and the journalists departed. As they did so, Charles West came up to the fat controller. Just between you and me, Mr. Hat, I don't think you'll have anything to worry about. Ill-informed speculation is always trumped by facts, after all. The fat controller nodded, grimly. Thank you, Mr. West. West left, and the fat controller strode over to Gordon. I do apologize, sir. Gordon began, but his rudeness was completely uncalled for. Then, when he tried to use me to attack you... It's all right, Gordon. I understand. The fat controller smiled reassuringly as the guard's whistle rang out. You'd better get going. Thank you, sir, Gordon replied as he began moving out. The fat controller watched him go, thoughtfully. Uncomfortable as it was, he had to admit that reporter had made a good point, and 
Some of the other journalists had seemed to agree. Try as he might, the Fat Controller found it hard to imagine a set of circumstances where the collapse of the bridge wasn't the railway's responsibility. That worried him. A couple of days later, Percy was bringing a passenger train into Wellsbridge. The little green engine frowned as he brought his coaches alongside the platform. Shouldn't there be more passengers? There should be, yes. James replied from the other side of the platform. You mean you haven't noticed it yet? Noticed what? We've been having less passengers ever since that bridge collapsed a couple of days ago. Now, Percy was even more confused. What? The one on the Little Western? Yes. It seems they may think the rest of the railway might be unsafe. Percy scoffed. That's ridiculous. I know. That's what the Fat Controller tried to tell them at the press conference. Unfortunately, it didn't go too well, James said, and he told Percy what he'd heard from Gordon. The tank engine's face fell. I hope it'll be all right, he said as James's guard blew his whistle. So do I, Percy. So do I, replied the red engine sadly as he departed. But it was the same story all across the railway. Despite the continuation of services on the Little Western, there weren't as many people travelling on the trains. The engines couldn't help being a bit worried. It was only a few days till Christmas, and usually they were swamped with extra passengers and goods. But now, they actually had less work than a few weeks ago. It seemed that Thomas's fears may have been justified, after all. <laughs>